Hey guys, James with TFB TV. You're watching TFB TV Showtime. Thanks a ton for watching. This is our new channel that covers only gun shows, shot show, NRAM, trigger con, blah, blah, blah. Please subscribe. Do us a favor, especially if you want to see live up to the minute coverage from all the major gun shows. And when I say gun shows, you know what gets overlooked? Shit that isn't guns, unfortunately, because SHOT Show, there's all kinds of booths. You have awesome knives, awesome gear, and I think that gets overlooked because everybody wants to know about guns, guns, guns. That's why I'm really glad to have TFB TV Showtime because we can emphasize things that aren't firearms on this channel if we want to because you guys just want to check out the sweet ass show coverage and that's what you're gonna get today, boy. We're getting five of the best non-gun items from SHOT Show 2020. Let's start out with number five. Number five, the EOTech G30 magnifier cost half as much as the battle-tested, battle-proven G33 EOTech magnifier. However, it's the exact same glass, the exact same magnifier. Just instead of a swing-out mount, you're getting a QD mount. Uh, last one we got coming out is a, is a low-cost version. So it's a derivative of our current G33, very rugged, but what we've done is we've added a, a fixed QD mount. So instead of having to flip, uh, we've reduced cost by just adding that QD mount. So it clips on and off really quick. You just pop it off, throw it in your pack if you don't want the magnification. Uh, but that's bringing the cost way down to get that thing under three hundred dollars. So, oh, wow. but all the great, same great ruggedness as the G thirty three. So otherwise, all the same features. It's just the mount stiff. Yeah, just the mount is different. Okay. Yep. So you're talking two ninety nine for battle proven clear glass. That's the thing. You guys got to worry about clarity and eye relief. It's all there with the EOTech for only $2.99. If you don't like the QD mount, then just buy it with the QD mount for now and get a swing out mount later. Or look to a third party, buy a less expensive mount. Anyways, I think they're pretty cool, so that's why they're number five. Number four, kind of lame, but I was stoked about the 511 Vehicle Ready Kit. So you're talking for the Headrest VR Kit, $15, $45 for the main kit, and then you can just throw all your stuff on there. Molly, hex grid, hook and loop, whatever. Hexgrid is our patented multi-angle load bearing platform and if you can kind of see here this Hexgrid shape it really allows you the ability to pull a pouch not only in the vertical situation or the orientation which is like normal but allows you a horizontal different angles upside down so in the vehicle situation it really makes sense. We have a loop face on both of the panels here so in the situation where obviously this makes sense here we have an IFAT pouch an urgent situation you need to go Simply pull off the pouch, we have our hook adapters here and you're ready to go. Here we have our two banger gear set which works with our all missions path, our all missions plate carrier. With a loop face here, let's say you have your magazines, maybe your CCW or something that you don't want to leave in the car, you can literally just, again, pull off yeah. the whole gear set, pull off the whole system or let's say you have this on your pack and you're not ready to go, you're going to be working from your vehicle for a while, pull it off your pack jam it on here and you're all set to go. There are other options out there that have a more rigid system here. We want it to be flexible because we're really thinking about that transient operator, that transient person. So let's say you spend the time to kit your car out, but you have an operation or a duty calls in another city, another country, and you're gonna have to hop into a rental car or whatever your vehicle situation is there. Uh, this whole platform comes in this mesh bag. You literally roll up your platform, you're ready to go, go to your next city, jump in your rental car, swag it all up and now you're ready to work from that vehicle too. So I was impressed with that, not only for what it offered, but for the price. For 60 bucks, you get a whole vehicle ready set and you can just add your pouches, whatever else you want to throw on there with your gear that you got at home. Number three, this one's kind of a weird one, guys. This one's going to be a weird one. Uh, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of you. The, I'm, I can't believe I'm about to say this, the 5.7 millimeter Spear Gold Dot Ammo. Why am I saying that? I did an article, I was like, okay, screw it. I'll do some research on FN 5.7 because you have the new Ruger 5.7 that's coming out. You're seeing PDWs being made in 5.7. I was like, look, is this a viable caliber now that I can get it in something that isn't like the P90 or the $1,000 FN 5.7? Lo and behold, it kind of is. And that's what made me stoked about it is it had comparable performance to 9mm plus P plus ammo and a lot of the testing that I've seen out there, but you're talking less recoil, more capacity, which is really interesting. Anyways, here are the gold dots in 5.7. This is going to be the first genuine attempt at like a self-defense round 
for the 5.7. And does that mean that maybe we're going to see subcompact 5.7s now? A lot of people are excited about We uh, did a 5.7 load this year, so we knew there was a really large installed base of 5.7 guns out there with FN. So we, the, for the last year, we've been working on developing a gold dot bullet. And for 5.7, because there is going to be a lot of velocity difference between some of the carbine length guns all the way down to the handguns. We really built it for the handgun, but we needed to make sure it could handle the velocities if you, you stepped it up into a rifle. So the gold dot bullet, because of that bonding, it's a really robust bullet, so it can handle those kinds of differences. So you get beautiful upsets and good penetration depth, and that's the thing is, it's not going to those velocities where you can get penetration, expansion, and the velocity type of benefit from, from uh, uh, as far as for wounding potential. So start with penetration, expansion, get the bullet as big as we can and going deep. So we're getting 14 inches, and you're seeing upsets 0.37 to 0.41 size upsets. Found out actually after we had already been working on it and, and uh, we're about to come to market, Ruger had that gun coming so uh, we are testing it and making some actual small updates to make sure we're getting good function and performance out of the Ruger. Different mags and feed ramps and stuff so it's just confirming there. But yeah, that Ruger gun we expect to really help help this caliber have a nice resurgence, good price point, good gun. Yeah, so I know that one's kind of out of left field but I think the 5.7 is a frontier yet to be explored. It's looking promising. Let's see what happens with development with like compact, subcompact, like carry guns for 5.7. If they can ballistically perform out of shorter barrels, we might have something here, gents. Number two, Vortex 1 to 10X, LPVO, low power variable optic. Wow, I mean, 10 is not low power. Is it really an LPVO? If you can get 1 to 10 in like an LPVO size, Really, the last people to do this well were EOTech. They've got that 5 to 25 that's really small, but this 1 to 10X from Vortex looks to be promising. It looks to be reasonably priced. Check it out. Uh, at SHOT 2020, we're highlighting the brand new Razer 1 to 10 by 24. This is our Generation 3 Razer. Uh, it's the successor to our Gen 2 1 to 6. So with that optic over the last few years, um, being very successful and um, being a really solid uh, low power variable option on the market, we wanted to take the, uh, all the benefits of that optic being the very large field of view, the very generous and forgiving eye box, and then the, uh, the very rugged durability that that optic has been known for, and kind of build upon that into a first focal plane optic with a 34 millimeter tube. And so working backward from all of those specs, the durability, the field of view, the generous eye relief, and the very insensitive eye box, um, what we came up with was our, our Gen 3 1 to 10. So there's two first focal plane reticle options. We've got our EBR9 BDC, and we've got the EBR9 mil. So with those two options, you've got a speed option in the BDC, and you've got a precision op option in the, in the mil. Um, really one of the main focuses of this optic is to be really the ultimate optic for an AR platform for a DMR type gun um, and I think what, what we've done is uh, something we're pretty excited about and uh, we're, we're here hoping that uh, the customers feel the same way about it. So that's cool. I know three gunners are going to be into that to be able to switch down to 1x and possibly shoot both eyes open and dial it all the way up to 10x with the same optic in a relatively compact package. I've got to see it to believe it. I mean, to me, it's unbelievable, but hopefully I can get a review copy from Vortex and maybe take it out to a carbine course and let you guys know how it performs. Brace yourselves. It's time for number one. I think that the SIG series of 3D printed titanium rifle silencers were freaking awesome. I love this. I took John Hollister. We went over to the rocks over in the SIG hunting section. We sat down, had a little picnic and a chit chat talk to me lovingly about the 3D printed titanium suppressors that are coming up in the very near future from SIG. I mean, this thing's super lightweight and, well, and it's know, 762 rated. Yeah, it is. It's 300 Win Mag rated. So I had a guy the other day actually asked me if I thought if 3D printing was the future of silencers. And I said, no, it's the, the present. We're doing it. Right. You know, we're doing a handgun line, which is our Mod X that we're doing in uh, printed titanium. And in our uh, new X, uh, SLX line, we're doing uh, printed titanium and printed uh, Inconel 718. When we get into the uh, handgun, we've got the SRD9, the Mod X9, Mod X45. 
and those are segmentable. I can actually take it apart. We should have brought one over. Um, I can take it right down to the baffle level, and I can reconfigure the uh, silencer to have less baffles. Now that will increase sound, but Obviously. also increase the handiness of it. Sure. If I'm using an MPX with a longer barrel, I don't necessarily need the entire silencer right. to get really good sound out of it. Right. So I can knock that down to three Easily or four Easily customizable on the user end. Exactly. Now walk me through what you guys are going to have, 3D printed suppressors for rifles and carbines. So what we did was we did some military contracts and one of the things that they wanted was less back pressure. When we, anybody out there who has shot a rifle with a silencer on it before, always complains that they smell a pneumonia smell, uh, that it's choking me, I'm crying. Some people are more susceptible than others. I'm not susceptible at all. Um, but Sounds it, like a weekend at my house. It actually. does, it does. Crying. Ammonia smell, <laughs> crying. <laughs> exactly. But um, it can also be harder on the gun. It increases cyclic rate of the gun. Yeah. Uh, it is harder on the parts in the gun. So back pressure is not a good thing. So we figured out a way to do reduced back pressure. You guys, I imagine, are going to have like a 5.56, 5, 5, 6, uh, 5, 7, 6, We're going to do a 6.8. We've got a lot of uh, requests out there for 6.865. Six, so 6.865 six, dedicated. Dedicated. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we're going to do the 300 Win Mag, which will do 300 Win Mag, 308, 300 Blackout. If you want to put it on your 5.56, five, we'll have that capability. Uh, we're going to be doing steel and uh, titanium in the 6.8 and the 30 cal. Uh, Inconel 718 and the uh, 556 only. Mm -hmm. uh, we're down the road, we're looking at doing a dedicated 300 blackout. When I say that, it is optimized for sound for 300 blackout, um, not a 300 wind mag can you can use on right. it. So right. if you think I, I know exactly what you mean. Now, yeah. Where do you see something that's tuned specifically exactly. for 300 blackout? What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. 3D printed titanium silencers for our rifles. I love it, gents. That was my favorite. I was the most thrilled about that, but it's me personally. You guys tell me, what other non-gun stuff did you see at SHOT Show that you absolutely loved? Tell me in the comments. Maybe I'll ask for a review copy. Maybe I'll integrate it into the content in the future, but I just have to say, Thank you so much for watching TFB TV Showtime. It went way better than we could have anticipated. We're probably going to kick over a million views by the time the SHOT Show coverage is over, which is amazing for a brand new channel. We have over 20,000 subscribers at this point, thanks to you guys. So again, we are very appreciative of you watching. Stick around though. We're bringing you more coverage from Showtime.